Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on interior access for universities and schools. My name is Cindy Jones with the Knox Company. Today we are presenting Eliminate Interior Barriers for Emergency Responders on School Campuses. Now I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Deputy Fire Chief David Kerr. Chief Kerr currently serves as a fire marshal and deputy chief for Plano, Texas Fire Rescue. His experience includes municipal and industrial fire protection. He serves as an adjunct faculty member at the National Fire Academy and is actively involved in code development at the local, state, and national level. He is a member of several national fire service organizations and serves on numerous boards and commissions. To begin our program, we have a short video. When buildings are locked down, rapid access is important because not only do we want to get to whatever the 911 call is, but we also like to protect property. The Knox elevator box is a box that is typically mounted in the elevator lobby and it contains or holds the keys inside of that for all use with the elevator. We're oftentimes called to make an elevator rescue. That means when people are trapped in an elevator, if we don't have the keys to open those hoistway doors, we may have to break open those doors, which can create a substantial amount of damage. In the past, obviously, we've gone into many buildings that don't have an elevator key box. It ends up costing the building owner a lot of money. So everything that we can do without doing damage is, is much better for the end user. The Knox document cabinets are typically found outside of a facility that uses hazardous materials. Will contain uh, safety data sheets. It can have floor plans, it can have keys for uh, areas that are typically locked or inaccessible that you wouldn't have a general key to. And we will look inside that box in order to find out what materials are inside that building. It tells us the name of the chemical and how to mitigate an emergency with it. What we're trying to do is make sure our firefighters have information before they go inside. It's large enough that it holds pretty much everything a fire department needs for access and information specific to that structure. The Knox Rapid Access System allows first responders the ability to enter a, a structure without waiting for additional information. In our business, it's about time, the availability for firefighters to quickly access something and then have the ability to lock it back up and preserve those people's property is huge. Welcome to our webinar this morning. Uh, the fire department, as you can see, has access to your building. So you, you're familiar with the exterior uh, Knox box for us to get into the building, but once we get in the building, how quickly can the fire department navigate your interiors? Sometimes these are very large campuses, very large complexes with uh, very confusing hallways and corridors. And then does the fire department know your risk and where those risks are located within your building? So once inside, let's take a look inside. Once we get inside the building, you can see a whole list of things that the fire service needs access to. Especially if we're looking at a tall building, we need elevator access. We need to be able to get up to uh, the, the, the emergency quickly. We need emergency contacts. Uh, who do we contact uh, about the building? Location of hazardous materials, very critical uh, for us. Also the pre-fire plans. What and when I say pre-fire plan, in this case, I mean pre-incident planning. So it could be a fire, could be tornadoes, hurricanes, it could be a hazardous chemical release. So anything within the building, pre-fire plan is a generic term that we'll use for an all-hazard response. Floor plans. We need to know the floor plan of how to get around inside these, these, these large complexes. And then our ability to get into offices and suites is important. But being able to access mechanical rooms, electrical rooms, those are where the critical infrastructure of the building is located. Fire alarm controls, sprinkler controls, fire command centers, uh, shelters, entry exit points, all these things. This is just a beginning list of all the things the fire service needs to be able to access and get into once we're inside your building. So access is always a challenge. Uh, as more and more schools are getting uh, more and more uh, hardened, it's getting more and more difficult. Also, there's multiple buildings on your site. 
you have an ever-changing campus. Keeping up with current trends in technology and keeping up with the current uh, education is what you are all about. So that means you're constantly remodeling, retooling, redoing your campuses, keeping them up to date and modern. That means up to date plans as the building remodels occur aren't always readily accessible to the fire service. And you're looking at a 24 hour operation. Your building operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But those key personnel are, gonna, are not gonna be inside every building. They may be on campus, but uh, where on campus? And then the fire and police would, would really need a consistent location that they can always go to and know they're gonna have the most up-to-date, most reliable information about your facility. And then you all have, again, some special facilities such as stadiums, auditoriums, research labs, those types of things that are unique to your campuses. So again, looking at this challenge within your, within your university, you see the map in the upper right hand corner. That map in the upper right hand corner, I can't tell by looking at that map which rooms are labs and where chemicals are stored and what's going on inside that building. So having a numbered floor plan or some way I can find that very quickly then lets me know, oh, in building or room 42 is where the hazardous chemicals are stored and the lab is in whatever room number. So, and then look at the lower right hand corner, you see the evacuation route. How are people gonna get out of the building? But more importantly, once they get out of the building, where are they gonna go? Are they gonna go just out in the middle of the yard or do you have a predetermined location for them to go? If it's 110 degrees outside or 10 degrees outside, they're gonna to need to get to the shelter. So what building are they gonna to go to next? And then of course we talked about the critical infrastructure. Where's the power and elevators and shelter locations, life safety systems, all those things can be located easily on a very clear uh, floor plan. <clears throat> School laboratories. School laboratories, uh, again, if you're gonna have a fire in a building, it, 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 you know, this is a very likely area to have one, uh, especially if you're looking at a teaching lab or a research lab. Uh, anytime you're dealing with those types of things, there's a, a chance for something to go wrong. So the fire department really needs to obtain uh, information about what's in those rooms. Is it a fire hazard or is there a potential explosion hazard? Are there flammables being used? Are there toxic gases being used? Corrosive, radioactive? What type of lab are we dealing with? And what's the exposure hazard? Not only the first responders who are going into the building, but those who may have been in contact when the event happened as well as the evacuation zone. Now, when I talk about evacuation zone, I'm really talking more about, let's say we have a chemical gas release. That gas is released and now it's in the atmosphere. We need to know the wind direction and the toxicity to know how far downwind to evacuate parts of your campus. So you can see, we've got a lot of things that we need to have access to rapidly. So if I can get those all in one location, such as the Knox document cabinet, this would be really great. Inside this cabinet, there's things that are required by the International Fire Code, IFC, and the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, fire codes and standards. Such things as pre-fire plans we talked about earlier, hazardous materials response plan, equipment shutdown procedures. There may be some things on your campus that we shouldn't shut down. There may be, uh, again, uh, directions to critical access areas, life safety systems, and then now we're seeing more and more of a need for us to know what are your lockdown procedures? What are you gonna do in an active shooter? What's going on inside the building? That, that very clear uh, plan is gonna be very critical for us to know how to maneuver throughout that building for police and fire. So the document can, here's the code sections for both the NF PA and the International Fire Code, the IFC. They require the storage of plans inside a fire command center. Now fire command centers are required anytime you have a high rise building in your building. So it could be a high rise dormitory or a high rise office building. Any building you've got to high rise is gonna be required to have these documents kept. If they're not kept inside a locked and secured facility or box within your facility, let's say the plans are stored in the corner on the left hand side, you're seeing some fire control room pictures there. If you just had the plant stuck in some corner over there, that could walk off and not be available when the fire department really, really needs those. So having these things secured and neatly displayed is gonna be very important. 
for the fire service. Now, what's the cost of not having these documents available to us? Well, it could be thousands of dollars for doors we have to replace because we don't have the keys, we don't have access. We may get, be getting into the wrong door and we need to go into another door. So now if we've damaged uh, additional doors, anytime we're doing anything off you're seeing in the picture here, there's a chance of harm to the responding crew and possibly occupants. And then we may, we may be going into a hazardous area and didn't even know it's hazardous uh, area. And delay and time spent. That delay could be finding uh, access to the fire command center. It could be, again, cutting into the wrong door. It could be not being able to identify the materials that are, that are hazardous within the building. All those things could certainly increase the cost of our response to your facility. So now let's take a look inside uh, the Knox document cabinet. So what I have here is the standard Knox document cabinet. Now when you see this cabinet here, you're seeing a single entry key. Now also there's the ability to, to order a second keyway located just below the keyway you're seeing here. Now that would be for a trusted partner like the university, someone trusted within your staff that would have access to that cabinet. Now their access then would allow you to have the most up-to-date plans, allow us to have the most up-to-date uh, uh, chemical inventory, and then inside this box are gonna be critical keys. If you had to re-key a certain lab or a certain area of the building, you could easily replace those so the fire department knows they get there, the most current things are always gonna be available. And the key that operates the outside exterior Knox box to get in the building also operates this box. So if it's during the middle of the day, I can bypass the exterior access box, go directly into the lobby. I can then take the key, place it inside here, turn my Knox key, a quarter turn on the handle, and now I'm inside the box. Now once I'm inside the box, let's take a look inside this box. Lower left-hand corner, you see I've placed a card in here that has the building contact information. I have the keys that, that the fire department needs to get around on the campus. So again, we work with the campus, we've identified those keys. I've got a pre-fire plan book here. I pull that out. Again, my pre-incident plan is here. Behind that can be my chemical inventory. Behind that can be my, my schematic floor plans that I need so I can be able to get around the building. So I can, again, maneuver in there and I know exactly which part of the building I need to be going to quickly and rapidly. Now let's say I need to get into a certain part of the building, a certain room in the building. Let's say I need, I need the key to the fire pump room, so I'm gonna ask for the key to the fire pump room. Fire pump room key is being pulled for me, and then now look, here it is, properly located, tells me exactly where the fire pump room is, and now if I don't have that key available and I go to the fire pump room, if I had to take the door off that fire pump room, I can do more damage to that one door than the cost of this cabinet. So you can see it's a very valuable tool for us to have not only to have quick access, have less damage to your facility, but also give us the information we need to move quickly and rapidly throughout your facility. So again, once everything is replaced back inside, it's locked up and secured, and now it's all accountable and ready to go for the next incident. So the Swansea Fire Department saw a need for having information readily available to accommodate both police and fire. So we need to have that available. And they saw that they needed information and layout for their, their varying campuses throughout their, throughout their city. They have six public school campuses there, and they said, we need something that can be reliable and credible and always know we've got the information there. So they ended up going with the Knox document cabinet to put all the things they need right inside that box for the fire service and police service. So continue on as a, 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 on our inter access solutions with Knox, we have elevator emergencies. Let's take a look at some of those issues. So all across this country, every day, firefighters respond to elevator rescue calls. There are hundreds of thousands of elevators all across this country. So the fire departments have a set of protocols or procedures that they go through when they're dealing with an elevator emergency. So for example, they need to find the elevator machine room quickly. So we can shut down the power to the elevator. We must turn the power off before we start dealing with getting folks out. 
you can see we have someone coming out of the elevator here being rescued. If that elevator was to start back up again, that person could be severely damaged or injured in the, the car beginning to move. We need to be able to communicate with the trapped occupants. There's nothing worse than being trapped in an elevator and not knowing what's going on. We need to be able to talk to them, let them know how to turn off the alarm, help them be calm, know that we're coming. We also need to maybe contact your on-site personnel and let them know that we're there. And then we need a, a special access to a, a special key called a drop key. We'll talk about that next. So here you see inside the box, so the Knox elevator box is more than just an elevator box. It has the ability to hold keys to other critical parts of the building. So keys to the elevator cars. So I need a key to not only call the car down, but then I need a key for each individual car. I may need five or six keys. Each individual elevator car has to have its own key. I need a key to the electrical room to turn off the power. I need a key to the fire command center, the mechanical room, the fire pump room, stair access. Grandmaster access. So I need to, and then it would be nice to have a guide inside this box that tells me how to silence the alarm. How do I talk people inside the elevator car into how to silence the alarm? And then the technician's phone number if I need to talk to the technician. Upper left hand corner, you see that's the ring of keys I have to carry that are the what's called the drop key or that hoist away key. Once I turn the power off to the to your elevator, I now have to manually open those doors. So this allows me to manually open those doors by having the, well, that tool on the left-hand side. You can see I got a lot of them to choose from there. The right-hand side is the, all the keys I have to carry to have to operate the varying elevators within the, the city. So there could be you know, different manufacturers, different ages, different model numbers. You can see it's a cumbersome set of keys to have to carry and fumble around. So the cost of not having an elevator into your access can be very costly. You remember we saw in the video earlier, you know, talking about, they, they were talking about forced entry. Well, here you see a picture on the right-hand side of us having to actually forcible in, enter an elevator shaft. That's gonna be damage to the elevator. We're gonna, we can warp and buckle the doors. Thousands of dollars can have to be spent to fix all the things that can be damaged with, you know, prying these doors open. Anytime we're forcing anything like this to open with, with a lot of pressure, there's chance of occupant injury or firefighter injury. So we want to try to avoid that. And then we've got a delay. There's always a delay if you don't have the tools you need available right when you need them. Delays getting to the finding the elevator machine room, locating it, getting the power disconnected, having the right elevator drop key. All those things are going to be a time delay. So the interior access box, the elevator box, is going to be very important for us to be able to move very quickly and rapidly. So again, there's a code section for this as well. Uh, the International Fire Code, you see the section number here on, on, on your screen, talks about talking about the uh, elevator key box mounted at the lowest level of fire department access on the right side of the elevator bank. Look at the upper left-hand corner. Upper left-hand corner shows just a little two-car elevator, you know, for small uses. It says on the right-hand side, so you see that. Now, on the, on the, you see the, the, the red uh, triangle shows the, obviously the right, right, that's obviously right side. And then the middle one, a little more confusing. It's like, okay, well, which right side do I put it on? I got two elevator, I got two elevator cars facing two other elevator cars in that bank. Doesn't matter. The code, the code doesn't really care. Just put it on the right side, whichever one you want. Now, the bottom one is a little more confusing, a little more complicated. If your elevator banks are more than 30 feet apart, let's say you've got a freight elevator in the back of house. It's more than 30 feet from the passenger elevator, you'll need a separate box for that. Or let's say you have two high rise towers uh, in your, on your campus separated by an atrium. You'll need a one for each tower in there. Uh, so the, the, the white, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the red triangle shows the location by code. The gray or black triangle on the right-hand side there shows an alternate location. Let's say the face of your elevator is marble or stone or granite or some kind of grand entry that you've got there. Either new or retrofit, it's going to be difficult to put that box just right around the corner, maybe a foot around the corner, is normally gonna be sheetrock. So you could certainly easily install it there 
and it certainly meets the intent of the code. The code just says on the right side of it, it doesn't say on the right face. So I think you meet the intent of the code by placing it there. So let's take a look inside the Knox elevator box. So here you can see, again, the elevator box is uses the exact same keyway that we use for gaining access. So if the building's in the middle of the day, I can go directly to the elevator uh, lobby and, and grab this using my Knox key and a quick quarter turn, and I'm in. Once I'm inside, I have the building contact information on the right-hand side. Left-hand side, I, you can see I have the drop key, the long, long slender key, the drop key, and then other keys that I need for maneuvering throughout the building. Now, here's the keys I have to carry with me if I don't have access to this box. Look at all the keys I have to carry for to, just to operate the elevator, because I don't know which one you've got in your building. Now, the key you see in the very center is the elevator key for this particular building. So now I grab that key, and I know that key is the one I need for this building. Now, I also have to have, if I don't have this box here, I have a set of drop keys I have to carry with me. Now, I've got to carry this set of drop keys with me, and again, I've got to keep poking the hole to see which one fits your particular elevator. They're all different. But if I have the properly calibrated key between my index finger and my thumb, you see a little silver ring there, that's adjusted. So now I push the key in until it hits that, that ring. The drop key then, of course, then that little lever drops down, allowing me to hand crank the elevator open because I've already had to turn the power off. So the only way I can get it open now is to manually open it with that drop key. Very, very important. So again, this, this box, again, uses the same keyway that from the outside to get in, in, into here. And now we can have our box secured once we're finished, all the keys have been accounted for. So here's a case study here for the Hagerstown Fire Department. Now, Hagerstown responded to a fire uh, in an apartment building on the ninth floor. They got up there, had a fire up there, but they only had one set of interior access keys available. So the key ring and everything, it all went up there to the upper floors. Well, that means that no one down below the, the second and third responding crews that are coming in, they had no access. Their keys are up on the ninth floor. So again, they could see they had a, a problem there. The solution was the Knox elevator box. It's now required for all mid and high rise buildings in Hagerstown. So Knox has the, the one key solution. It's unlimited access and you see this is, the, this is the Knox rapid access solution. You can see here in this picture, you know, this is the whole system here. Today we just focused on number three in red. So those are the interior access points that we've talked about. In future webinars, we'll, we'll, we will go through the other pieces of the, uh, again, of the access solution that Knox has for your campus. <clears throat> so what are my next steps? What do I, I, I see now, you can say, you know, Chief, I see the problem. I, I, I understand. Uh, I, want, I want to have good life safety for my campus. I don't want people trapped in the elevator for long periods of time. I don't want additional damage to my campus. So what do I do next? Well, Next is contact your local fire department. They'll work with you on, again, where you need to place them, how you need to place them in your, in, on your campus. You can start by identifying the buildings with elevators, your special use buildings, your stadiums, your auditoriums, your hazardous materials locations. So that, you know, th those could be where we can start with that. Now, Knox has what's called regional account managers, and they can help you also in implementing this on your university and school campus. So work together with your local fire department and the Knox Regional Account Manager. You know who that is, your local fire department certainly will know who your re regional account manager is. Okay, well thank you, Chief Kerr. We'll go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a reminder, you can submit your questions using the Q&A button located towards either the top or bottom of your screen. And several of you submitted some questions during the presentation, which we strongly encourage you. So we're going to start with those. So um, the first one, is the cabinet box weatherproof so it can be used on the exterior of a building? So currently, the, the box is not weather tight. No, it's, not, it's not weatherproof out there. Now, Knox is, has, is, has prototypes in a, right now. They're working 
uh, with to make this weatherproof because we know that some of you may want this on the exterior of your building uh, again before you enter into a hazardous chemical area. So Knox has a, a pro prototype. They're working on a, on a uh, uh, again, a, an environmentally uh, correct box for that. And that should be available by the, by the end of the year. Okay. Next question. Is the elevator box available in colors other than red? And the answer to that is yes. And if you look at the screen right now, you can actually see um, the colors. It's available in the red and then an aluminum and a dark bronze as well. So you do have options there. So let's see the next question. When Chief mentioned a two key system in the box, can that second key be keyed for police in an active shooter situation for schools? Yes, we, the, we, this is a, a very common thing. So that second keyway below could be a, a keyway that, that, that's both uh, used by the police and let's say the university, maybe university police, university uh, staff uh, that would be in charge of, of, of chemical inventories. So again, that key could be a com combination key. Uh, it, it can be uh, what's called submastered. So again, there can be uh, more than one user of that second keyway. Good question. Okay, so the next question is about criminal access. Is it easily done with a key? And um, all of our boxes go through a very rigorous UL testing, and they are tested to UL 1037, which is attack resistant. So I don't know, Chief Kerr, if you want to. <clears throat> yeah, the, you know, the, the extra Knox box product has been around for 45 years. It's very, over 45 years, it's very reliable. Uh, the keys are, uh, are, are kept uh, in, in our apparatus. They're, they're in a locked uh, environment there. And so they're very secure. And then it, 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 it's a very unique uh, key pattern that's used. So it's very difficult to, uh, to duplicate, even if you had one. Okay. Is Knoxbox available in Canada? Yes, we are. <laughs> so um, if you don't know who your local um, regional account manager is, please call um, Knox at 1-800-552-5669, and we'll be happy to tell you. And that toll-free number works both in the U.S. and in Canada. So it is not a special key. It's the same toll-free number. Okay, how reliable is very reliable? I'm not quite. I, I'm not sure on that one, but I mean the reliability is certainly in the proven track record and track history of, you know, uh, the, the over 45 years of service of these boxes. And again, I think the reliability also relies on the UL standard, very rigorous standard, very rigorous testing. Uh, that, you know, having that UL mark on there means that it is resistant to, uh, again, exterior attack. Yeah. And each of our products comes with um, detailed installation instructions. So when you have a contractor install it, those instructions actually have gone through the UL, UL testing. So we strongly encourage you to use those instructions to make sure it's installed correctly so that someone can't inadvertently get the box off a wall and take it to an undisclosed location and have unlimited time. So that is why we strongly encourage you to use our install instructions and follow those. Um, let's see, some other questions we have here. Um, do I need one document cabinet for my campus or one cabinet for each building on campus? Great question. and. Um that's where you need to work with your local fire department to see again uh, working in partnership with them uh, certainly uh, they'll be the ones to know if you could share a box for say two different buildings if, if they're in close proximity you may be able to share a box i will work with the fire department on that and they'll work with you on prioritizing uh, which if you need to put in more than one box on campus uh, they, they work with you on prioritizing which 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 locations need, need boxes on a higher priority than others and so Again, uh, you may not need one for every building, but you may need more than one box because your campuses are quite large. And again, the fire service will help you with, again, location of, of those boxes. Good question. Okay. Um, next, does the fire department use an SOP or standard operating procedure for returning all info into the box? 
So the box, uh, there, there, there'll be an inventory of, of keys. So if you're asking like, oh, let's say there's 25 keys in the box. Uh, how do I know all 25 got back in there? There should be a, 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 an inventory. Uh, so when we, when we first place the keys in the box, then most fire departments have a procedure whereby they, uh, again, both parties sign off on what keys are in that box. So again, an inventory can be done annually or as often as you want to do an inventory to make sure that the 25 keys are all still there. So for example, if I need, if I need five keys to operate the elevator, I'll make sure all five keys are there and one hasn't walked off somewhere. So and again, after an incident, we certainly want to make sure everything has been accounted for and replaced. Okay, is a tamper switch provided as standard in these boxes? And the answer is a tamper switch is an available option. It does not come standard, um, but it is an option and it is available for both the eleva elevator box and the document cabinet. Um, the next question is, how much does that document cabinet cost? And I have the price right here. It starts at $995, um, so, or 955, it's 995 with the tamper switch, I'm sorry. That is a single lock box. If you get it in the dual lock configuration with both your fire department and police access, it is a little more expensive. It's $1,015 or $1,055 if you want the tamper switch on it. We do, I strongly encourage those who have alarm systems to order the products with the tamper alerts so that they can have those set up. Okay. What are the options if a box access key is lost or stolen? Well, I think that it depends on if you're looking at a single or dual lock. I can tell you that the Single lock key, only ones have access to it are the fire department, and those keys are secured within our vehicle. They're, 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 they're locked uh, with a special Knox uh, uh, box within our vehicle that, uh, again, it's very secure uh, with that. The secondary keyway, uh, again, uh, Knox have a limited number of, of, of keys that you, that you want to have issued, maybe like one for your campus. Uh, if it's lost, then you can you can certainly rekey. Uh, let, let's say let's say you have a, a dual key, so that, that lower keyway, you could you could rekey that one keyway on the lower, and it would not impact the upper keyway. So again, uh, keyways can be uh, rekeyed. Okay, let's see. I'm getting some questions on other products that we haven't covered, so we're going to handle those offline with those individuals since it's not products. Um, that we've been covering, um, and they don't deal with the electron or the elevator box or the cabinet. So, if you have any more questions on the elevator box or the document cabinet, we'll take them now. If not, we're about out of time. So, um, but those of you who have questions on our other products, we will be in touch with you with the answers. So, we're not going to ignore your question. It's just, it's we're going to handle those offline. So. Doesn't appear we have any more questions at this time, though. Uh -uh. Okay. So, Chief Kerr, is there anything you wanted to cover before we wrap up? I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time out of your very busy schedule. I know you all have a lot going on uh, on your campuses, and we appreciate your time and attention. Uh, we hope that you'll strongly consider working with your fire department. Uh, I can tell you that it's very important uh, to the fire service to have a good working relationship with our universities and campuses. This is certainly a, a great way for us to partner and work together to, to have a more safe and secure campus out there. So again, thank you for your time and attention today. Okay, thank you everyone. We appreciate your being here today. As a reminder, if you have any questions or want additional information on the elevator box or document cabinet or any of the other Knox products, please visit knoxbox.com backslash, backslash interiors, and that's interiors with an S at the end, or contact Knox at 1-800-552-5669. A recorded version of this webinar will be posted on knoxbox.com. As soon as it's available, we'll send you an email with a link. Thanks again for joining us today, and we will see you next time.